Hello and welcome to uh, GarageBand Tutorials with me. Um, I'm Seismic Music. I'm a producer. I make music primarily in GarageBand, but I'm also familiar with Logic, Linux Multimedia Studio, and a host of other music production programs. Now, um, I'd, I'd like to do some tutorials on GarageBand. I've been wanting to do tutorials for a very long time because I get the feeling that people are typically, they have this stigma there's a stigma about GarageBand that it's for you know for beginners, and it it is a very good tool for beginners, but it also it's a very powerful program that has a lot of potential, and I think a lot of people don't realize its full potential. So I'm going to do some tutorials to show you just what you can do with GarageBand. So I'm going to start out by just doing a tutorial on how to make a song, just the basics of adding instruments and constructing your song, and not really the theoretical part of you know, music theory, but just the mechanics of how, how to make a song in GarageBand. So, let's get started. It's really pretty simple and it's very intuitive, so uh, you can figure it out on your own, probably anything that I don't mention. So, by, to, to start out, we're just gonna go ahead and, you know, start, start a new project in GarageBand. And that's accomplished by either the first time you open GarageBand, you'll get this screen that's up right now, or you'll, uh, you can just go to File, New, which it won't let me do right now because I'm in the window already, just do File, New, it'll come up with this screen right here. So what you're seeing here, you're seeing a whole bunch of icons for look like different different instruments, and these are for different styles of projects, depending on what you want your GarageBand project to, uh, to be or to accomplish. So we've got, for example, we've got keyboards, uh, guitar amps, uh, we've got for uh, audio, audio recording, voice. Uh, if you want to make a ringtone, you can make a ringtone. It's pretty cool, actually. It's a cool feature. Hip hop, uh, drum. These are mostly mostly um, electronic drum machines, um, electronic synthesizers, and songwriter, which is mostly for recording instruments. Also, from your using your microphone, and then empty project. Finally, now I usually start um, with just an empty project. I like to start with a clean slate and just do everything myself to avoid just the confusion of the software putting in whatever it wants to put in for me. Um, I'm just going to take a quick break here also to apologize in advance for the wind noise you're going to hear on the computer, which is actually the fan on my laptop running. It's what you get when you buy a MacBook Pro with high-performance graphics. You get the fan running constantly. And I'm recording, you know, screen recording, and um, I've got GarageBand open, which tends to gobble up a lot of RAM. So um, if you hear the fan running in the background, I'm sorry about that. I can't really avoid that. Mubby. So, um, right, so back, back to the tutorial. <laughs> So we're just going to start with a new empty project here. So we've got that selected. If you go down here and you click this little tab next to where it says Details, you're going to get a whole bunch of other options uh, that, that you can customize your song template with. So here we've got Tempo, which is you know the, the beats per minute of your song, basically. You've got your key signature, which you can change what, what key your song is in. C flat. <laughs> right. Uh, major, minor. Um, you got your time signature here, which you can actually change to like pretty much any time signature there is, or you can set your own. Um, then you've got your audio input and audio output, which is basically just um, which which output you want your computer to use, whether it's headphones, speakers, Bluetooth, and then your input, which would be either the built-in microphone on the computer or a microphone, an external microphone that you plug into your computer. Um, for me, I always leave it on system setting because whatever outputs and inputs my computer has set in system preferences will carry over to GarageBand. So that's typically what I leave it set as. So for this example, we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna go ahead and put the tempo at 128 BPM, which is a typical like electronic, you know, music uh, thing, right? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the uh, the, the key signature in uh, C major. We're gonna just leave that and then everything else we're going to just leave as it is, right? Then we're going to hit choose down here. And it's going to open up our new project. And here we are. All right, so now we've started a new project here. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of icons here. We're already being assaulted with information. So we've got a number of icons here that are different, that it look like different instruments. So we've got... Uh, this, this is basically what your first track in your project will be. Uh, what what instrument it'll be. 
So we've got, uh, first we've got, our first choice is software instrument. And what a software instrument is, is uh, it's any instrument that in which the computer is synthesizing the sound for you. So an instrument that you're not playing, that the, that it, the sound is being played through the computer, right? Uh, so that's what a software instrument is. So it'll pull from all the sound uh, instrument libraries that GarageBand has built in. Um, so pianos, keyboards, guitars, uh, drum kits even, uh, synthesizers of course, um, so that's what you use most of the time, it's what I use most of the time. Then you've got your audio input, uh, which is if you want to record um, audio with a microphone, either yourself singing or maybe a, an instrument like a guitar or something like that, um, you can put in a audio track. Um, then of course you've got a guitar track, which GarageBand has a whole library also um, of guitar and bass amp emulators um, and effects pedals, so you can basically use your computer um, as a guitar amplifier, which is really, really cool. Um, another really cool feature um, that's in GarageBand that I use occasionally. Um, then you've got a drummer track as well, which what that'll actually do is um, it'll lay down a drum beat for you. Um, based on what's in your song, based on the style, and it's very highly customizable, um, lots of drum kits, lots of styles, so I'll, I'll go over that more uh, in depth later, maybe in another tutorial. Um, but for right now, let's go ahead and add in a software instrument track. So we just click software instrument, and click create. And here we go. We've got musical typing here, which I'll, uh, I guess I'll explain now. Basically, it assigns each key on the keyboard to a key on your keyboard, on uh, on your actual like physical computer keyboard, um, which is kind of cool. But uh, also, it's also very difficult and impractical to use. So I don't really use it very often. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and click out of that. There we go. Um, so first things first, I'm going to go ahead and go over all of the parts of this GarageBand window and what everything does in GarageBand. Because for new users, uh, it's a little bit overwhelming, especially for people that have never used uh, music production software before. So I'm going to just sort of go over and do a brief explanation of what all the buttons and what all the areas of the window do. So the first thing's first up here. In the upper left, we've got um, the library on the left side of the screen here. Now this is uh, GarageBand's collection of all the instruments. Since we selected a software instrument track, we've got all the software instruments that GarageBand has. So you've got your user patches, which are um, which are uh, presets that you've set um, of all the settings and stuff you've messed with with each instrument. These are all presets that I've created. We've got basses, drum kits, electronic drum kits, uh, guitars, mallets, vibraphones, pretty, pretty cool. Um, orchestral, brass, choir, percussion, etc. Um, you got one piano. You've got a mess of synthesizers. GarageBand has so many synthesizers. I haven't had a chance to try them all. Um, I have. I've used maybe ten or so of them in my songs. Um, but there's a ton of synths. Really, really good uh, collection of synths. You've got your vintage B3 organs, uh, clavinets, electric pianos. Arpeggiators, which is a sub a subtype of uh, synthesizers, which I'll go over in another tutorial. We won't, you know, use it uh, for now, but um, those are really really cool, also. And then you have Chinese traditional, which is sort of out there, and um, I haven't ever used Chinese traditional or even like looked at them. Um, it's just added in the in the latest update to GarageBand, so it's it's pretty new, and I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but uh, probably really really cool. Um, so yeah, so these are these are this is the whole library of software instruments. You can always search if you want to find something uh, more easily. So uh, next, we've got all these buttons on top here. Uh, there's a whole mess of buttons. I'm going to go through each one, so don't worry. Our first button here, this little drawer here with some files in it or something, is going to collapse uh, the the library section here on the left. So if you don't want to see that anymore, just click the button. Bye bye library gives us some more space in the screen. Um, our next button here is this little question mark um, button here, which is the quick help button. Now what this does is if you mouse over things, you'll see down here, um, it'll tell you what everything does that you're mousing over, which is really, really cool actually. Very helpful for beginners. Um, 
also just if you want to find out more information about anything, um, it's really, really cool. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, I really, uh, I've never actually used it, because um, I pretty much learned everything by myself or from the internet. Um, so I never really had to use it, but really, really great tool for beginners if you're not sure what something does. Next, you've got the smart controls here, which uh, I'll go over in more detail later once we've added some instruments here. But this just gives you some knobs and effects and things like that, basically, to control every attribute of your, uh, of your instrument. Next, you've got the track editor here, which is for editing uh, your regions of notes or uh, sound of audio in your uh, track that you have selected. Um, so that's for making more fine adjustments to the actual notes um, in your song. So uh, I'll go over that again in more detail once we've added some instruments. Then you've got your, uh, your um, control buttons here. You've got rewind, fast forward, and you can see it skips forward one bar at a time. Pretty cool. Uh, then you've got your skip back to the beginning button here, and and or stop. Uh, and you've got play, you've got record, also pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then here you've got this neat looking little like LCD uh, screen at the top, which shows you your project info. Now first off, we can switch this between project info, which is what it's on right now, or time. Time shows you how far you are in the song, and it actually shows you, you'll see, it has now switched the tick marks to be in seconds instead of bars, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so you can go back to Beats and Project here. And you can actually adjust these values here um, by just double clicking on them. So for example, if you want to skip to bar 5, let's say just double click, let's do bar 5, maybe beat 2, uh, division 7, and just hit enter. There we go, now we're exactly where you want to be in the song. Cool. Then you can always just skip that. Then you got your tempo here, your BPM, which we can change to put it at 128, like we specified in the uh, in the new project window. There we go. Then you've got your key, the key of your song, of which you can switch. Pretty pretty cool. All right. Then you've got your time signature, which you can actually change. So let's say that we're uh, crazy, <laughs> and we're gonna put our song in three. 64 time. Wow, okay, we got a lot of tick marks now. It's crazy. Um, I'm not terribly comfortable in writing songs in 364 times, so I'm going to switch it back to 44, if that's all right with y'all. There we go. Um, and then we have the loop button here, which loops a specific section of the song. And you'll see if we enable this, we'll get this yellow bar here. Um, and then it, we can we can drag the ends of it here. Click and drag to change the length of it. So, for example, if we put the yellow bar over just bar two here, and we hit play, or you can hit space bar to play and pause the song, which I think is much easier than clicking play. So hit play, and you'll notice when it reaches the end, it goes back to the beginning and loops forever until you pause it. And if you skip back to the beginning, if you hit the skip beginning button once, it'll skip back to the beginning of the loop. We hit it again, it'll go back to the beginning of the song. So pretty sweet. Next you've got the, uh, the, the tuner, so if you have your guitar plugged in or a microphone, you can tune your instrument using GarageBand. I found that the tuner is not the best uh, that a tuner you can buy for a guitar, you know, or something like that, or, you know, uh, is a lot better than GarageBand's built-in tuner, but it gets the job done, and it's, it's a pretty cool tool to have um, in case you need it. Next you've got the, the count-in control here, which is for recording. So with this turned on, if you hit record, it'll give you four clicks of the metronome. It'll give us four clicks of the metronome, and then it will begin recording. It's pretty cool. So now, uh, the if we we we, we can't actually change um, how many how many clicks of the metronome we get or how long of a count in it gives us. So if we go up here to record, count in, we can set it to two bars instead of one bar, or you can turn it off altogether. Uh, you can set it to two bars, and now you'll see it should give us eight clicks of the metronome before it starts recording. So here we go. And there we go. Now it's recording. Except, remember, there's nothing to record because we're in a software instrument track and not an audio track. So since we don't have a, uh, a MIDI keyboard with us at the moment, uh, we're not actually uh, recording anything into the software instrument track. So now, uh, the next thing we're going to like it is the metronome button, which, as you might expect, gives you a metronome. Um, it's very similar to the, uh, to the, 
the sound you get when you turn on count in, except it'll be doing it the entire time the song is playing. Now it won't render in the recording, so you won't hear the metronome clicking in the recording um, of the of the final song when you export it from GarageBand. Um, but uh, but it it'll help to give you sort of um, give you the the tempo if you're playing along an instrument or recording yourself singing or anything like that um, in your song. So first, to, to, to enable that, let's go ahead and turn off um, count in here. And you'll see, if we turn on the metronome here by clicking this button right here, and we, we press play, it'll click the metronome for every beat in each measure. And there we go. Cool. Awesome. All right, so we've we've got a few more buttons uh, and sliders and stuff here in the top bar to discuss. So uh, one thing that we do have here now, we have this slider, which, if you'll notice, looks a lot like the volume slider on the track. And of course, when you click it, it actually says volume, just like the one on the track. Now there's a difference between this volume slider here and the volume sliders in the track, and that is that this volume slider here at the top of the screen on the the top toolbar here. Um, this this slider here controls the master volume. See if you mouse over it, you got master volume. And I'll, I guess I'll go into a brief explanation of what uh, what the word master uh, means, or one of the applications of the word master in music production. So when you say uh, master anything, like master volume, uh, master equalizer, master effects, master track, uh, these are these are all attributes that that control. Um, uh, the, they're, they're all controls of attributes of the track as a whole, or the, the entire song. So if you think about master volume, you're talking about the volume of the entire song, not individual instruments. Or the master equalizer controls the levels of each frequency for the entire track. Um, and master effects will be effects that you add uh, for the entire song. So in this case, we have the master volume knob here, so if you turn this up to 6, the entire song will get louder. Or if you turn it down to infinity, then you will hear nothing because you have your volume effectively muted. But we're going to put it back at zero. There we go. Our next button here is the notepad, which is actually a really cool feature of GarageBand that I'm glad they included. And basically what it is, is it's, it does exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you click it, and it gives you a notepad. In GarageBand, you can type into, cool, Ugh. cool. You can type some stuff out. Maybe you can type your lyrics into there. Um, you know, just or notes to yourself about what you want to what you want to do with the song and your future careers in music production because of my amazing tutorials. Anyway, uh, enough about that. But uh, so let's let's go ahead and <laughs> close the notepad. Um, next, uh, we're gonna go over one button here, and we've got a loop. Now this is the Apple Loops uh, tab menu, which holy crap, there's a lot of stuff in it. Um, Apple Apple Loops are really, 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 really great. Because um, if you're not very musically minded, um, you can just drag and drop your loops in until you got something that sounds cool, and then you can copy and paste it around a bit, you know, and then add some more loops, etc. And then, you know, you can have a song. So loops are really, really cool um, for use. However, people tend to overuse loops sometimes, which um, can kind of get on the nerves of some <laughs> music producers. Um, especially with GarageBand loops, because people that use GarageBand or Logic or Apple products know right away when they hear an Apple loop in a song, you know, or a, you're a documentary, you know, or anything like that. Um, so use, use, in my opinion, they should be used sparingly, but I wouldn't say not to use Apple loops, because they can be really wonderful tools if you're uh, new to, uh, to the music production scene. And I'll, I'll probably do a tutorial later on Apple loops, but uh, for right now, we're just going to collapse the Apple Loops tab and um, go on to the next button, which we've got the Media Browser, which is something I have never, ever used in my entire life or career using GarageBand. But <laughs> basically what it is, is if you want to drag in songs uh, from iTunes, or if you want to drag in other GarageBand projects, or uh, maybe a movie from iTunes or from uh, from photos, you know, or any any basically media from your computer, from either iTunes, GarageBand, or photos um, to use in your GarageBand project. If you want to put your music to a video, uh, you want to sequence it, 
or if you want to put a different song you've made from Garage from iTunes or GarageBand, or if you just want to make a mix, you know, your uh, fire mixtape that you're about to drop. Um, yeah, just, you know, you can drop that in from the media browser. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. So we're just going to collapse that. And that's, that's it for all the buttons on the top row. So now um, we're gonna, we can actually get to uh, starting to making our own song. The real question is, of course, have I gone over? Um, have I gone over mastering? Okay, scratch that. We're not going to start working on our song yet. There's one more thing to go over that I very nearly almost forgot about, and that is, of course, all the controls here on each of your tracks. Now, you'll see as we add more tracks, every one of the tracks here on the left is going to get uh, a set of these controls here that you see. Um, on the track, and I'm actually going to show all of the controls because some of them are currently hidden. So just so you know, in case you see them uh, in your in your project, uh, you'll know what they do. So I'm going to go ahead and unhide everything. Okay, there we go. Now we've got them all. Okay. So, all right, what do all these do? So um, your first thing you have here—it's very basic. This is the icon. This shows you what instrument uh, your track is, and sometimes it won't be correct necessarily because GarageBand sometimes doesn't know uh, what instrument your track is if you define it yourself and don't use one of GarageBand's presets. So if you ever want to change it, just right click on the icon. It gives you this whole huge menu here uh, of um, a bunch of different uh, icons. So for example, let's say that this is a piano, but you know what? You want it to be a dog. There we go. That's a dog. Dog. Piano. And that is, of course, the, uh, the the title of the track, which you can change. It'll default to whatever instrument you assign the track, but if you just double-click it, you can just type in whatever you want there. It's pretty cool. Um, below that here, you've got the mute button, which basically what it does is it does exactly what it says. Again, it mutes the track. And every other track in the project will still play. It'll only mute that one track um, that you click that button for. If you click the mute button on multiple tracks, it will mute all of those tracks that you have muted. The next button here is the exact opposite of mute. It is the solo button. And the, the solo button uh, plays only that track and mutes every other track. So uh, sort of sort of like the, uh, the mute button. If you, uh, if you solo multiple tracks, you'll hear only those tracks in the project, and all of the others for which you have not soloed will be muted. Next here we've got the track lock, which um, makes sure, which uh, allows the track, or which, I guess, which uh, doesn't allow the track to be recorded into. So um, conversely to that, uh, if, if you enable um, uh, recording here on the track, if you enable recording for multiple tracks and then you hit record, you will actually be recording into multiple tracks in your project. Uh, so you can hit record enable for a bunch of tracks and then maybe you don't want one out of five of your tracks to be recorded into, just hit lock, track lock, and it will not let you record into that track. Pretty cool. Next, we have the volume slider here, which just like the master knob controls the volume, but this time it only controls the volume of that one track. So if you double click the volume slider here, it'll give you a value that's in decibels and you can type in anywhere from 6, which is max, to negative infinity. So we can type in negative 108. It's negative 108 decibels. Actually negative 95 is the least unless you want it entirely muted, it looks like. But let's go ahead and set it back to zero. Alright, and the last thing here we have is the pan knob. Now the easiest way to explain um, panning is basically if you set the pan all the way to the left, which is what L stands for, um, then all of the sound from that track will come out of the left speaker or the left channel um, of your audio device. If you set it all the way to the right, it will only come out of the right channel or the right speaker or your right headphone or whatever whatever audio device you have. But um, we'll just we'll just leave it at a zero for right now. Um, because that's usually what we'll leave it at. 